Richard Krause. The gap between James King of the World Cameron's last theatrical feature, Titanic, and his new film, Avatar, Clint Eastwood directed 11 movies, Michael Bay made 6, and even Uwe Ball, a director so reviled there is an online petition to prevent him from making any more films, has made 15 in the time that it took Cameron to make just one but it's quite a movie. Avatar, based on an original idea by Cameron, is set in the 22nd century on a small planet called Pandora. Under the lush terra firma is a valuable mineral much sought after by the Avatar program, a collaboration between industry and military. Since the climate and atmosphere aren't hospitable to humans, a substitute for homo sapien invaders is required. That would be living, breathing avatars of the Pandorian natives controlled by a human driver through a high-tech link that connects the driver's mind to their avatar body. The 10 feet tall, blue-skinned natives called the Navi, although humans dismissively call them blue monkeys, uh, are deeply connected to their planet, with a connection to the land and all its creatures that defies human comprehension. Only one man comes close to understanding the Navi. He's Jake Sully, played here by Sam Worthington, a former Marine who lost the use of his legs in combat. Brought on board the Avatar program, he is initially used as a mole to infiltrate the Navi community and glean information that will make the harvesting of the minerals easier, but what begins as simply completing his mission and using his legs again through the Avatar soon becomes something else. He learns to love not only the Navi people, but also one Navi in particular, Natiri, played by Zoe Saldana. First, let's dispel some myths. You don't need to take gravel with you to the movie theater. There were rumors on the net that Avatar's mix of handheld cameras and 3D were literally stomach-turning. Well, it's not true. Secondly, it's not Dances with Wolves in Space or Fern Gully with Aliens. Number three, sight unseen, people were calling it Cameron's Folly, a three-hour waste of film and money, a reported $300 million also not true. And number four, the Navi are the new Jar Jar Binks, blogger screamed. Well, that's not true either. With Avatar, Cameron has made a sprawling epic that lives up to the hype. It is something completely new, a movie that is not a sequel, a remake, or based on an existing novel, a film that sprung from Cameron's imagination and exists on its own plane. Brett Ratner, Michael Bay, and all you other Hollywood hacks, Hang your head in shame. Cameron starts from scratch, creating a whole new world with language, customs, religion, and crazy creatures, but never forgets that this is an action movie and not an anthropological study. To that end, he adds allusions to the Iraq War, shock and awe policies, and the Native American genocide all bundled up in one giant sci-fi romance action flick. It's not all perfect. The dialogue is frequently 1980s action movie lame, filled with cliches. There are logic lapses, and Saldana's character shifts from Ripley, remember her from Alien, to Damsel in Distress in the Blink of an Eye, but the film's achievements outweigh any of these misgivings. And despite what the early word on the movie may have been, Cameron, who at this rate won't make another film until 2221, makes the audience feel compassion for obviously computer-generated giant blue creatures, keeps our interest for almost three hours, and presents a dazzling climax that'll leave you slack-jawed. Richard Krause.